Okay, boys and girls, we are here for our last lesson for this week, and it is going to be a Keith Haring inspired sculpture. Now, you might be asking, who is Keith Haring? Now, Keith Haring made a lot of art that was people moving in very simple shapes. So using rectangles and squares and circles, he really made it look like people were moving around. His work was very inspired by graffiti and pop art. So we are kind of gonna take this idea of using simple shapes to make a athlete sculpture. So for today's lesson, you will need, you can hear it coming, tin foil. Now, if you don't have tin foil at home, or you don't want to use the tin foil at home, if you have Play-Doh or any type of clay, you can even go back to last week's lesson and learn how to make salt dough, and you can use salt dough for this lesson. So any of those will work. So what we are going to be doing is we are going to be using tin foil to create a Keith Haring inspired athlete sculpture. So I'm going to start by taking my scissor and just cutting off a small piece. And I'm going to crumple it and this is going to be the head of my sculpture. So already we have one part done. So I have a circle here. Now for the next part of my sculpture, I want to start thinking about how I'm going to be attaching these things and how to make it stay together. So now I want to use, make the body. So what I'm going to do is I have a pretty nice rectangle shape here. I'm going to put my circle in the middle and I'm going to go around and now I have head and I'm squeezing in here to make the neck and here I have my body so this is looking pretty good so far and you can you know the more you squeeze in the narrower and more condensed the tinfoil becomes so you want to not squeeze so hard right away, work a little softer, and then if you want to keep going, then you can keep squeezing. So that's a very important tip. You don't wanna squeeze it all the way down and it becomes into a little string of tin foil. You really wanna make sure you are squeezing lightly on the tin foil. So now I have my head and my body. Now, the parts of our body that show movement are our arms and legs. So I need to think about what is my athlete doing? So I'm thinking I might make a volleyball player who is, you know, waiting for that ball to come over the net to grab it and hit it back over. So I need to start thinking about what I want this volleyball player's arms to look like. So I'm going to take this and See how I'm crumpling very lightly. I didn't squeeze it all the way down yet because I want to think about how I'm going to be attaching it. So I'm actually going to cross them to help me attach it. And then I'm going to narrow this down. And here we go. So now I have my volleyball player and maybe their arms are out in front of them ready for a set or maybe they're up or I should say a bump and then maybe they're up and ready for a set. So that's something I can do. Now I am going to add another piece of tin foil over that to kind of make it a little bit thicker. So I might only use a very little. The good thing about tin foil if you can keep building by going on top. Squeezing in for the hand. There we go. I have one done. 
Now I'm going to do the same thing to this side. And remember, this is a challenge. You really need to make sure you're not squeezing all the way down and you're really working ever so softly. to get the shape that you're looking for. So here we go. I think I have my two arms all complete. It's looking good. And I'm going to take another small piece and just kind of secure this on the body. So the more times that you kind of go over and build up, you're really securing everything into place. And the good thing about tinfoil is you really don't need, and notice by doing that, I kind of wrapped it around And I'm just, you know, adding on pieces to really make it stick. And the best part about tinfoil is that they kind of like push into all their other folds and all these other places. So it really helps hold everything together. So now I have my arms up, here's my body, my head, and now I just need my legs. So what I'm going to do, I'm gonna start here and start with just one leg. I'm like the arms, right? I did the arms at the same time. This time I'm gonna do one at a time. Maybe a little bend in the knees. Oops. So there we go. I wanna narrow this down and make my foot a little smaller. That's looking good. And now I'm going to do the same thing to the other side. So let's see how do I do that. And see, as I push it in, we really do see the tin foil kind of coming together and making a new shape. So there we go, a little bend at the knee, narrowing that down. Okay, so now I have this nice last piece of tin foil, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to secure everything that I've just done just by taking taking my tin foil and just kind of squeezing it over all those parts that I just created and there we go and now I have my volleyball sculpture are ready to play. Now, if I wanted, I could take the rest of my tin foil and crumple it up and make that volleyball. Maybe I could, you know, have it in my person's hands if I wanted. Okay, so that's another idea. And you can paint your sculpture 
by using acrylic paint or you can just leave it as it is. Um, if you have glue or tape at home, you can take a piece of construction paper and take your sculpture and put it on there. And with just a little bit of tape, I'll show you. We can get our sculpture to stand without us having to hold it. So that's another option for you guys to get your sculpture to stand on its own. I hope you guys had fun with your Keith Haring sculpture and I can't wait to see what you guys have created.